Welcome everybody to the NFL Draft Geek Film Room. I am Brian Johannes, and on this episode, we're going to take a look at LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. No 2020 NFL Draft prospect has risen the draft boards during the season as much as Joe Burrow has. He went from this summer watching his his game his junior game tape of being a game manager, a uh, draft, you know, kind of a borderline draftable prospect to LSU opening up their offense, hiring Joe Brady, the development of Jamar Chase and Terrence Marshall and Justin Jefferson, and turning Joe Burrow loose that he's been able to showcase his skill set, and now he looks to be uh, potentially the number one overall pick, barring you know some unforeseen circumstance, being the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. I did a Joe Burrow breakdown at the beginning of the year. Uh, you can find it in the clip above uh, against in his game against Texas. And at the time, I was still on the fence because it was so early in the season. Um, I was still kind of hesitant and, and just going all in on him. But throughout the progress of the season, throughout the college football playoff, uh, he's kind of emerged in that. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to take a look at his two playoff games. I feel like these two games really encompassed a lot about Joe Burrow. And I'm going to uh, look at what makes him such an elite prospect uh, for this year's draft class. Uh, kind of look at a, a maybe one flaw that I see in his game, and then uh, we'll go through and look at maybe some comparisons and projections of what he can be in the NFL. All right, let's go ahead and get look at the tape. And the first thing that I want to take a look at, and I think this is one of Burrow's biggest strengths, is his ability to throw with touch and accuracy down the field. As we see in this clip here, he's going to uh, just make a throw down the left sideline and just drop it into his receiver for an easy touchdown. And we see this time and time again, just that ability to just throw with that accuracy. That, you know, the ball, putting it's not on a line, it's not a cannon, it's just got a nice arc and it comes in and just falls right into the lap, right into the hands of the receiver in stride. This receiver didn't have to slow down at all, he didn't have to speed up, he just maintained his stride and continued to do that. We see that again here, looks off the safety to his left, just drops this ball into the receiver, uh, chase down the sideline for a touchdown in the national championship game. Um, you know, like I said, he's looking this way, drawing the safeties away, and so he's able to then quickly flip and turn back and make that catch. We see another example right here, just once again, dropping this ball into the receiver over the top. Uh, for the touchdown. We even see it where he's on the run. In this situation, he's going to be uh, have to move up in the pocket, adjust, and while on the run, still rolling, able to throw. That puts a little bit more under that one. Uh, that was a little different as we see. He didn't put as much air, put a little bit on the line, but once again, it's still able to be dropped in there. Nice accuracy towards the sideline. Look at where this ball ends up at the receiver right here hey the ball's out on the outside the receiver's able to to adjust to it cornerback had had no chance at that play so once again he's shown that accuracy that touch down the field we see this accuracy in the red zone once again able to just drop this ball right in there to the wide receiver uh as he makes his uh run into the end zone so he's able to throw the deep he's also able to th show that touch in the short areas as well. Now, Joe Burrow's not just someone that can throw with touch down the sidelines as we've seen. He can also use it over the middle. And on this throw right here, he's going to um, hit this receiver, as you can see, over the middle. But look at this. He's able to take that ball and drop it over the linebacker. And yes, it should have been a catch. Uh, that was a drop, but it should have been a catch. He's able to throw it over this linebacker right there show touch, show accuracy, that ball should have been caught. That's not on Joe Burrow. Yes, it was a little bit high, but uh, very well had a chance to make that catch. Another thing that we look at besides touch is just his ball placement. On this deep throw, uh, he's going to put the ball where his receiver can get it. As you see here, it's just a little short and back. 
this receiver, if we back up a little bit, had no play at, at all on this ball. His head is turned. The receiver's going to the sideline. Burrow knows, hey, if I put it short a little bit and behind, my receiver is going to be able to go up, make that catch, uh, and make a play. And so as you see, just go and make that play right there. We see that again on this play. Burrow's going to put the ball up into the corner of the end zone, but he's going to put it. Look where this ball goes. It's high and towards the sideline, knowing that his receiver can go up and make that catch. As we see it once again, he puts it in the spot where he knows, hey, they've got tight coverage on him, but I can go up and I can let my receiver make that play. All right, another thing that I wanted to point out was one of the things that made Joe Burrow in this LSU offense so deadly was his quick decision and accuracy uh, along with the anticipation. And they ran a lot of these RPOs uh, where they're able to just kind of carve teams up underneath. And so he's going to run this RPO action, and he's going to be looking at this uh, slot receiver, the slot tight end. And as we see here, hey. The ball comes out, and he's making this throw right here. The receiver is just starting to make his, his uh, slant route. If we speed it up just a little bit or go back just a little bit, once again, reads it and able to get that ball out quick, and it ends up being a touchdown here. But you can see that ball is – he's already starting to make his throw right here, and the, the wide receiver has yet to make his break. We're going to see the exact same thing, pretty much the exact same play right here. Ball out quick, easy first down. Burrow's ability to throw with anticipation, to, to be accurate. You know, he's hitting these receivers in stride and able to kind of get yards after the catch. That ability to do that was huge part of this offense, and it helped him also take those shots downfield. We also see this anticipation in the goal line. He's going to hit his tight end Moss, Thaddeus Moss right here for a touchdown. Uh, once again, showing the ball is out right there. And you can see right here, Moss is yet to kind of sit down on his route. These defender, this defender's right here. He's looking that way. And he's able to just hit Moss sitting down in the end zone right there for an easy touchdown. And he does that with understanding the coverages, with understanding his offense, and just seeing and making those throws. Besides Burrow's touch and, and, and down the field accuracy, I think his best, second best trait, and this actually might be his best trait, is his elite pocket movement. His ability to sense pressure, adjust, make quick lateral moves, while also keeping his eyes down the field, has allowed him to make all these uh, special plays. We're going to see that in this, this clip right here. He's going to have to step up in the pocket. He senses this pressure off the edge. He will climb up the pocket, still nothing open, and then come outside and hit his uh, receiver there for the touchdown. Right? He's able to climb up the pocket first. Hey, you got to love that. You know, Stay in the pocket, look to make the play. Still in a great position to make the play, but with nothing there, He's able to roll out and make a throw across his body for that touchdown. We're going to see that in this play once again. He's going to get pressure up the middle. And he's able to move to his left, keep his eyes down the field, and hit his receiver. Not only is he able to elude this defensive tackle getting pressure, but his eyes always remain down the field to make a play. All right, one weakness that I've kind of noticed, and I saw that uh, Lance Zerloin of the NFL Network also pointed out, is if there's a weakness in Joe Burrow's game, it's his ability to make intermediate throws outside of the numbers. Um, as Lance Rowling put up, uh, he's 21 for 43 for 333 yards, five touchdowns, and four interceptions on throws outside the numbers. And that actually shows up on tape. And we you see right here on this throw, if it's kind of those intermediate routes, he can struggle. Looking over here, he double clutches, ball low. We're going to see that again in this throw right here. Going to his right, ball just dies going down. And then lastly on this throw, it's going to be uh, thrown to this outside receiver on this slant. He just kind of turns and makes this throw. You know, kind of looking over the middle, 
maybe it was his second or third read, just turns and makes this throw, and it nearly gets picked off. Now, is this stuff the end of the world? No. I think it's something that maybe he can clean up. Maybe he's you know, still struggling you know, do, you know, with the intermediate throw, putting too much touch on it, you know, rifling it in there. Uh, but I think that's something to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, you don't see him, at least in the, the six or seven games I have, he didn't throw a lot of like deep out routes. He didn't throw a lot of comeback type routes. It seemed like it was a lot of your short slants, short in-breaking routes, and then a lot of deep type go post type routes. So it'll be curious to see how he transitions to the NFL. They're going to build up whatever team he goes to. They're going to build up and, and run routes that are successful for him and, and run plays like that. But that's just something that you see a stat that's out there that it, it backs it up on tape. Overall, there's a lot to like about Joe Burrow, and we can see from these clips and, and throughout his season how special of a prospect he can be. I'm not quite ready to say he's on that level of what Andrew Luck was coming out or, or a prospect like that. To me, he seems to be his, his career production, his, his future, to be more of like a Matt Ryan type of prospect where he's a guy that could be a top 10 quarterback in the league kind of push towards that top five on a given season but I don't think he's going to be the next Drew Brees or Tom Brady or uh, you know those type of elite elite quarterbacks in the NFL I think he's going to be you know one of the better and when he, he's got that potential it all goes based off of fit if he does go to the you know Cincinnati Bengals are they going to be able to build up the team around him is he going to have that success um, that is crucial. You know, when I look at who he compares to, two names kind of came up. The first thought was a more athletic version of Jared Goff because when I watched Joe Burrow make those deep throws with touch and accuracy, it just was flashbacks to Jared Goff when he was coming out of Cal, his, his ability to make those touch throws. But Joe Burrow is a lot better of an athlete. He can move better in the pocket. So I think the best probably comparison to, to him for Burrow might be Tony Romo, just for the sense of his athletic ability, his ability to run around in the pocket. Um, I didn't show as many clips, but there's you know there's he's got tape out there of running around in the pocket and still making that throw. Uh, a, you know Romo didn't have a huge cannon for an arm. Burrow doesn't have a huge cannon for an arm. That doesn't mean that he can't make throws down the field. It's just that he's got to throw with better anticipation, with touch. And I, I think he's shown that he can do that. Um, right now, he's uh, I've got him uh, the same grade as Tua Tagovailoa. I still am giving Tua the edge over Burrow. So Burrow right now is my number two rated quarterback in this class. Um, that doesn't factor into his injuries. It's all game tape related. Um, but yeah, he's going to probably be the number one overall pick barring some crazy situation. I think he warrants the number one overall pick. Um, it's been fascinating to watch him develop and grow over the course of the year. Uh, and so it should be anxious to see how he does transition in the NFL. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. The best way to get it is to subscribe. Uh, while you're subscribing, find me on Twitter at draft underscore Brian, and make sure you follow my work at NFLDraftGeek.com. Thanks for listening.